So what are generalizations in NLP? Hey everyone, Mike Sweet here from MikeSweet.co.uk giving you the edge in life and business with NLP and psychology. And today we're going to take a deep dive into generalizations in NLP. Now, if this is your first uh, endeavor into NLP, I'd say switch off now. <laughs> this is going to get heavy. This isn't supposed to be easy to follow. However, the meta model, uh, which is one of the language patterns within, within NLP, is it's absolutely paramount that you understand it in order to become an effective coach, manager, leader, communicator, so on and so forth. However, don't go using this stuff on friends and family because you won't be very popular, generally speaking. So generalizations, as I said, they're a big part of the NLP meta model. And uh, I'm breaking these down into different videos just to give you a bit more of a, uh, a bite-sized taste into, into what the, uh, the meta model, how it's structured and how you can begin to use it. And generalizations, um, generally speaking, you'll find them everywhere. <laughs> See, a generalization, when people, uh, you know, we use them off the cuff and generally we uh, allow them to just be. You know, we, if someone says things like, um, well, CEOs are extremely stressed and, uh, you know, they die young. Well, generally speaking, but it's not too true. See, generalizations and lots of things in the meta model, the reason why we use them as practitioners and coaches is because there's, there's something that's been missed out here. There's some, some information that's been generalized and we can take a deep dive in and find out what that is. So when a person says things like, oh, it's the summer holiday again, I always get ill when I switch off. Well, generally speaking. Or, or people always get ill whenever they switch off. Well, generally speaking. So whenever you hear these, I mentioned that word violations, that's a kind of an NLP term that you'll read in all books, spotting these meta model violations. There are certain techniques and certain questions that you can ask to really begin to dive into the generalizations to elicit more information or find out what was really meant. So let's take a look at those now. So the first piece, and it's always, the first piece is always the easiest piece, isn't it? <laughs> it's a universal quantifier. So that's part of a generalization. I told you, if this is your first look into NLP, switch off now. This is heavy stuff with words you've never heard of before. So universal quantifiers are things like all, everybody, nobody, every, no one. And they are they're kind of extreme, extreme uh, examples. So, um, and, and everyone uses these, don't they? You see that there? See, they're very easy to end up with being a nodding dog to, but they're a real great chance as a coach, as a, as a mentor, as, a, as, a, um, as an investigator, to really dive into what's really meant by that within that person's map. So whenever you hear these universal quantifiers, all, everyone, no one, then you know that it's, you hit a generalization, and you know it's time to start digging, but not with friends and family. You've been warned. I've been there. <laughs> Okay, so even though we're talking about the meta model and it is a, a difficult thing to grab hold of, universal quantifiers, forget the name, but actually they're quite easy to challenge. So if you hear someone say, oh, it always rains on my day off, you nearly, all you have to do to challenge that is repeat the same statement, but you highlight that universal quantifier of always. And you just go, it always rains on your day off? Uh, they have the person uh, on the back foot because they're expecting you just to agree and go, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> uh, well, it's not, not always on my day off. So sometimes, and again, it's about generating possibility within a person's map, within a person's language. So a great way to challenge these uh, universal quantifiers is to just listen out, whatever they say, whatever that word is. Um, you know, every day when I try to get up early, uh, I struggle with the... Uh, struggle with getting out of bed. Well, every day you struggle with getting out of bed? Well, not every day. Well, even on Christmas Day, you can take it to the other extremes. Well, no, I, I can then. So you can begin to really take a deep dive and, and, and challenge these generalizations whenever you hear the, the universal quantifiers. And nobody loves me. You know, if you hear someone saying that, it's not a very nice thing for someone to believe or even stay. So if someone says nobody loves me, you repeat the same thing back, but you say, what, nobody loves you? Just to create a little bit of a wobble in someone's map and hopefully they come back, well, yeah, of course, my, my grand and my mum and my dad and my friend and you and so on and so forth, just to create that wobble. 
So nice and easy to really begin to challenge just by saying the same things but highlighting that universal quantifier. So the next one of the generalizations is modal operators. Ah. <laughs> So modal operators are um, an adverb that precedes a verb. So forget all the verbs and nouns and let me just break this down for you. These are things like should and try and must and, and can't um, and I will. Right? To, to really listen to these modal operators, you can really begin to find out what the true motivation is behind someone's statement. So uh, I should go to the gym. That's an interesting one. Uh, uh, I can't run any quicker. So let's have a look at some examples of modal operators at work. And thankfully, with modal operators, like generalizations, a very easy way to challenge them is to, to use that word that you hear. So if someone says, well, I should go out more, simply saying, should go out more, will again create that wobble that we're looking for. And then there could be something like, uh, I need to go to bed early because I have to travel tomorrow. And is there anything that's stopping you going to bed early? Or what's stopping you? Or need to go to bed early? <laughs> you see, it's really simple to challenge these, again, violations, take that word, but let's keep in NLP here. Whenever you hear them, grab that word, put an upward inflection on the end of it, which makes it sound like a question or becomes a question, and then it'll allow people to explore other options. Now, there are other versions of uh, modal operators. We've looked at modal operators of, ne of necessity. Um, now, let's have a quick look at modal operators of possibility. Modal operators of possibility are things like can, can't, will, will not. Those kind of statements, whenever you hear them, you can begin to challenge them. So let's have a quick look at some more examples of those. I can't see myself standing on stage singing. What stops you seeing yourself singing on stage? Or even, what would that look like if you could? I think it might not be possible for me to change my job. What's stopping you? You see, when people have these statements of possibility and they are, and actually what's happened, they've got, they've got a rigid block and actuality around that, they, they are stuck. By simply allowing them to explore another option is a great way to release that, uh, give, or give them more options and more possibility. Hey, that word's in there again. <laughs> so as always, now's time to practice, practice, and once you've done with that, practice a little bit more because these things aren't easy to remember. But hey, it's flexibility here. You don't need to be perfect in every single example just because it's written that way in a book. You're gonna be way more effective at just giving it a go. At the end of the day, if you hear these generalizations, you think this piece is missing and people have overgeneralized certain statements, then that's the time that you jump in to question those in a way that you know how at that time because that learning's only going to grow and that's how you become effective. Because whatever move you make, you do not know what the response is coming back. It might be yet another statement, another modal operator, another generalization, another deletion. Whatever it is, it's your job as the client, coach, manager, or whatever role you've got or desire to learn this stuff, then it's your job to begin to wobble that mold just to begin to let them know that the map is not the territory and there's another way to do this. So I hope you've enjoyed today. And remember, like always, you're not going to learn this stuff by watching me. It'd be great if you could, but you can't, really. You have to practice. Practice, practice, and practice some more, which is why I make this available on the podcast over at iTunes for NLP in Action, which is why I make it available on the blog at mikesweet.co.uk, and which is why I've got a 30-day free training, which gives you these bite-sized videos, most of what's on, on YouTube, uh, but in little bite-sized daily chunks over 30 days, give yourself 10 minutes a day to learn this stuff. It's completely free. Head over to mikesweet.co.uk forward slash free NLP and get 30 days of that in your inbox. No selling, just lessons. Until next time, bye for now.